Streamlabs is trash. So I'm just bypassing it. Just gonna bypass it today. Right. Hit the like button. Streamlabs is crashing my computer and just acting a damn fool. So we're just going to go straight through YouTube. Damn shame. Can't complain too much. It's free. So, but. If it's going to be that trash. So. No fancy doodads and none of that stuff right now, but that's okay. Streamlabs is trash. And kiss my ah. <laughs> <clears throat> Whoa. Not bad. I have no problems right now. I better have zero. I bet, not better, I bet I have no problems now that I'm not using Streamlabs. I see people, but nobody talking, nobody talking, nobody talking. Except for Bruce Kent. What's up, Bruce? What up, Bruce? Hello, are you anonymous people that I can't see right now? I can see you, but I can't see you. Y'all watching this on the smart TV? Can't chat. <laughs> Jonathan Reed and what it is. I'm scared to talk. <laughs> this is Bruce. Yeah. Good. Why is that doing that? Go away. Go. We ain't got to be all fancy. We'll do this straight through YouTube. Straight through YouTube. Josh Brown, what's up, JB? J Bizzle? <laughs> uh, all right. So, oh, no, that's, no, that's not right. So weird how that works. It looks like it's flopped. Looking at YouTube the setup or the uh, preview, but live, it's the correct way. All right. Take a sip, one more sip. All right, I didn't bring up the numbers. I mean, we did this in Juices Loose, but in case you didn't watch, let's see. Um, 
Oops. There we go. Gamatsu. Gamatsu. All right. I'm going to save this for the second topic because it this will be a good transition all the way through. Um, Sup T just got done watching Juice live stream. Uh, Juice live streamed. <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even know. And I'm part of the Juice's Loose crew. That's hilarious. Froghorn Leghorn said, I say, I say, I say. Being okay is never okay. What do you mean, EJ? LOL, I was on Juice's live stream too. <laughs> How did I miss that in the chat? Because we we share. Wow, I totally missed it. I was I was actually a little busy earlier, so I wasn't really in my office here. So that's <laughs> that's funny. Sorry, Juice. <laughs> I didn't mean to miss your stream, man. I would have watched, but I was busy. Haha, <laughs> he mentioned you were live. So when he was done, I was jumping on here. <laughs> that is, uh, I feel bad. I totally would have watched Juice's stream. But I, I literally, once I went live, when I went live is when I just got in here. So um, it was totally not on purpose there. Totally. That's That sucks. I miss your stream. I'll catch it. That always catches the replay. So. I was just complaining about Wii U sport or Wii U ports again. <laughs> it says juice. What else is there to complain about? Hey, what's up, T? This is Navon Wise. What's up, Navon Wise? Try link. What you doing, man? What you doing? AKA Slayer. Slayer. Just got off work and streaming some live tea. Baby. Yep. Uh, you didn't miss much. It says terminated juice. That's not a good way to sell your show. By saying I didn't miss anything. You gotta sell, man. You gotta be a better salesman. <laughs> um all right. So I'll just quickly go through my recent pickups and then we'll look at the numbers. We'll look at the numbers. All right. Now, well, as far as the what do you call them? The retro games go. I've had these games before. So these are rebuys, and some of them were actually, um, what do you call, reproductions. So I didn't buy the original uh, Miza TV. <laughs> it says Bruce Kent just came by to wish you a great stream. As always, about to go stream some Eternal Darkness. Yo, that is so strange, Navon Wise. I too was going to stream Eternal Darkness, and I started playing it before. I don't know if you're still here, but I started playing it, and then it said disk read error. And I kept getting a disc read error. And that's the game I so wanted to stream because I haven't streamed like in a while. And that was going to be my like Twitch uh, debut, Eternal Darkness. And my disc isn't reading. So now I got to buy another disc. I don't want to do that, but I have to because I can't find I can't find a resurfacer small enough for the mini DVDs for uh, GameCube. That's the thing that sucks about GameCube as far as like maintenance, because once once those discs get scratched, they're done. Or, you know, you got to have a special resurfacer, like a $1,000 resurfacer or something, and I don't have that. Um, I sell you a copy of the Twin Snakes in great condition for a bargain price of $120. <laughs> Says Juice. Uh, it is funny when you get disc read error and the game is a download. Wow. That's happened to you, John? That's crazy. That is crazy. Um, I've had like problems with downloads like spazzing out on me, but not a disagree. That's crazy. Me and my friends were talking about biggest gaming ripoffs and how hell did fifth and sixth gen get away with selling consoles without a damn memory card. <laughs> that's that's true. That is true. Um all right, so yeah, so these are that's so weird though that Navon Wise is streaming. Eternal Darkness, because I was totally about to do that. You can ask the Juice crew. I was talking to them about 
um, if they had a resurfacer because my eternal darkness did stop working. Uh, I was going to see, can I get to it from here? Oh, no, it, it will make too much of a mess. All right. So we'll start with this one here. This is a, I can't, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I can see what I'm doing here. All right. As you can see there, that is Golden Sun. Um, I have Golden Sun. I actually have it digitally still, too. But I wanted to play it in my Game Boy Player. Um, and that's the thing about me is a lot of my... A lot of stuff during the 6th gen. Um, that was like the last gen I was trading things and selling things for new things. So GameCube, especially Game Boy Advance, I barely have anything still from Game Boy Advance. I mean, I have like 20 games, but nothing what I'm used to having. Um, uh, game, or actually GameCube, some of the more partier type, part, partier, some of the more party type games on GameCube I don't have anymore, like some of the Mario Sports stuff. But uh, here it is, brand new. This is a repro, obviously, and uh, it works really well. Checked it out. But I actually have one that I bought that doesn't work well, and I'll get to that in a second. But everybody knows Golden Sun, pretty cool RPG that people want Nintendo to bring back, but they're too busy making Wii U ports to do that. And uh, fortunately, we don't have a big enough fan base that would say anything about it. Uh, we just accept it, but that's, that's coming later. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty cool right here. Uh, Metroid Zero Mission. Um, I felt like I, I thought I still had this on cart, but I don't. I do have it on my ambassadors program for my 3DS, so I, I do have it uh, digitally. And I think is that the only way you can buy it on 3DS? Is or that's the only way you can have it on 3DS is digitally? Um, I don't remember. Uh, Golden Sun is a game, says Jonathan Reed. Damn, Game Boy. Oh, wait, damn, I wish I still had my Game Boy player. Yeah, it's pretty cool, um, especially with you know having a nice uh, setup as far as your your uh, HD cable, HD stuff for your GameCube now. It's really good. Uh, Game Boy Advance games were too were so good, says Malik JC. Josh Brown. Oh, Golden Sun is the ish. Terminator. Seriously, I'll sell you my copy of Eternal Darkness for the going price if you're interested. You know I keep my shiz and wait, where I just lost you. Oh, I like new conditions, so you wouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that, man. I mean, I, I want another copy of it, so um, we'll 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 get a decent price or a good, decent sale for you there. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know I didn't know if you still had yours or not. You were talking about you were talking about um, Twin Snakes, which I don't need. I have it. Um, Malik JC Fusion is on the 3DS, not Zero Mission. Um, this is not a 3DS. <laughs> this is a this is a this is a repro case. So there you have it. Um, there's Zero Mission right on the bottom there, as you can see. Pretty cool cartridge, a clear blue, clear clear blue cart. Um, and this also works fine, although it does it does like stutter when you go to save, so that's concerning. But it's only concerning because, again, my ret uh, repro copy of Zero or uh, Metroid Fusion, um, which I also still have digitally, um, this one is not working correctly. Um, when I go to save, the first save. Freezes and nothing. It just stays frozen. And so I'm going to have to send that back, get my money back, or get me a better repro copy. I don't know what's going on with that. But it doesn't, that doesn't instill too much uh, confidence there. But yeah, this is a trickster case. Looks like a 3DS or a DS case. But as you can see, it says Game Boy Advance on the side there. And uh, yeah, original artwork, all that goody good stuff. Um, it has space for two carts, but they don't really fit in the space. That's another weird thing. Um, but they fit good enough that I can put them both in here. 
But like I said, I got to send that back. Because it's not working right, man. Uh, uh, I got these repros on eBay. You just, you know, look, you just put in the game and you'll see, uh, you'll see what, um, what are they called? Uh, auctions for the original games, but you'll also see a lot of repro stuff. Um, which I don't mind if I either owned the game before. Um, Cause like I said, I'm not that kind of collector where I gotta have it in box, you know, complete and with the with all the little uh, ads and all that stuff inside. I don't need that. I just want a playable copy of it. Um, only because I've been playing on my Game Boy Player a lot on my Game Boy on my GameCube, so that's why I care. All right, this is another game I recently picked up, Valhalla Knights. I had heard some good stuff about it. It is pretty cool. Um, and I also picked up a HD uh, HDMI cable from my PSP. Do I have it handy? Of course not. I sh my PSP should be up here. But um, I'll show you the cable. If you're familiar with PSP, this goes in the bottom, you know, where you're... Let's see if it's getting all... Come on, focus. Focus. All right, doesn't really want to focus. But anyway, you know where that goes. And then this comes out to an HDMI. Perfect. And so I'm going to be streaming some PSP as well. But uh, yeah, this is like a action RPG from Exceed. I barely scratched the surface of it. I just started playing. Uh, but it's nice graphics. Pretty cool setup. See some screens back there. Screens come into focus. There we go. There you go. So there you go. How will you play? All right. So wireless co-op. That's not thing they can do today. Explore a highly detailed 3D world. A massive portable adventure. It seems like a big, a big scope, big in scope RPG. All right, now we switch pickup. Yeah. Um, switch pickup. That is Nino Cooney. Uh, I always wanted this game. I was looking to it, looking into it for PS3. Just never gotten around to buying it. Um, because I didn't really play PS3 very much towards the end. Um, so I just never got around to buying it. And then when they said, Oh yeah, we're Porting it to the Switch because they port a lot of things to Switch. I don't know if you know that, but um, I was like, that's cool. Now I'll definitely get it. And uh, again, I haven't even touched this yet. So, but uh, I heard, I know, I know about it. I've seen reviews. I know it's pretty good. Uh, Nino Kuni 2 recently came out, I believe. So there's that. Uh, Forza Horizon 4. I actually had this on Game Pass. Um, but I, then I stopped using Game Pass, so I couldn't play it anymore. <laughs> but I liked it a lot. It's a really great Forza game. I like Forza. I have a ton of Forza games going back to original Xbox. So great, great game. Beautiful visuals. Beautiful. All right. Here's, a, I think, a hidden gem. I think this is a hidden gem. Um, this game is dope. Pretty good. Um, it is a... A racing game, kind of off road. Um, I think this was. I think this is supposed to be the sequel to. I don't think it says it on here. Um, to like Motorstorm or one of those types of games. This is this is like a sequel to it, but I guess they lost the the license, so they couldn't use that name. Um, but man, tons of arcade racing fun here, and uh, uh, I heard about it. I looked up a lot on it and everybody loves it. So on Rush, I don't think this is only on Xbox. I think this is on uh, PS4 as well. So look pretty cool. I'm gonna get into that. Here's a game I had been wanting for a while. Um, I still haven't played it yet, <laughs> uh, but I'm glad I got it because uh, I'm gonna get that enhancement. Uh, I might even just save this because apparently Xbox One is not going to, or Xbox Series X is not going to have any uh, 
uh, day one games to buy. <laughs> so maybe I'll just wait and get the upgrade because I only I have the uh, I have the OG uh, VCR Xbox, and so I won't be able to get all the 4K enhancements and stuff um, uh, that only included in the X version and beyond. So uh, maybe I'll just wait and make this a launch title for myself. See how that works. Um, <clears throat> here's another game that I had before and I picked up again, uh, 1080 Avalanche. I actually like 1080 Avalanche better than, uh, 1080 snowboarding on N64. Um, I don't know. This one's just seemed more fun, like better graphics, uh, nice controls. I think the controls are better in this one. Um, this is more fleshed out. NST, you remember NST, right? Nintendo software technology. Uh, the other Western studio that Nintendo had and abandoned for some reason. They need to bring them back so we can continue getting stuff like this and Wave Race, Blue Storm, and stuff like that. I think something like NST would have been would be great to do. Uh, uh, not Star Fox, maybe even Star Fox, but like um, another <coughs> F Zero as well. So there is that. Um, Wish we got a new 1080 game. Yes, Trilink, I do as well. Nintendo needs another Western studio. Um, it could be in the UK or it can be in North America. I really don't care. But they need another Western studio that actually pumps out games like ones that Nintendo doesn't really make themselves. So that'd be nice, you know. You know, it's not like they don't have the resources or the funds, because they do. Uh, as we'll talk about later. Uh, here is another GameCube pickup. Custom Robo. Um, Ra uh, Rob, not Rob, Robert from Gaming With Me. I think he recently got this game, so it got it back in my head. I got um, the two, I haven't played this yet, but I got the two N64 ones. They're only imports. They didn't come out here uh, in the West or anything, only in Japan. Um, so I'm wondering if this is an enhanced version of one of the N64 ones, because the N64 got two Custom Robo games, Custom Robo and Custom Robo V2. I'm wondering if this is a port um, of Custom Robo V2, the way uh, Animal Crossing was a port of, what was the N64 game called? Animal Forest. Animal Forest. It was Animal Forest on N64. And then Animal Crossing was a port of that, um, uh, or enhanced port of the uh, N64 game because we never got it here. And so I'm wondering if this is like a same, the same type of thing. Uh, <clears throat> I just got Custom Robo not long ago too, says AKA Slayer. Cool. Custom Robo was on everybody's mind. I think I have a feeling this game's probably going to go up in price because a lot of GameCube games have gone through the roof recently. And I think that has a lot to do with partially quarantining, but it has to do with the people quarantining, which are, you know, people that were young when the GameCube came out and they have, you know, fond memories of it. And so now they're getting nostalgic for the GameCube. And so a lot of people are buying GameCube stuff, which means prices shoot up. It's typical. It happens. So Visor Grunt, what is up? I mean, why would Nintendo use all the Wii U port money to bring back old IP? That takes effort. <laughs> True. Um, you know, we, I've said it a million times. The people who don't want to hear, you know, people complaining about Nintendo will ignore what you're saying. Um, even though you're making, you are, I am, I think I'm making a pretty valid argument where it's like, yeah, they're doing what's easy and cheap for them. But I'm not benefiting from that, especially me as, again, a hardcore Nintendo fan who already owns all these Wii U games. So, you know, I had a whole long rant about that. But are you going to do a top 10 obscure games video in response to Retro Death's video? Good question. And yes, I am. Um, it'll be within the next couple of days. I'll have that up. I'll have a, a standalone video. I haven't done one of those in a while. I've been doing these live streams for forever. And uh, so I'll be definitely doing that uh, try link um, and tagging those guys because uh, Clocktic did one and like you said, Retro Death did one. So definitely going to do that. 
Um, fangirl, Vicky, what is up? Yo, yo, yo. Uh, good to see you here. All right. Now, Jade Empire. I had um, one thing about the original Xbox. It has a lot of really awesome exclusives. I'm not sure if this is on Steam or not. I don't know. It may have got made its way there. Um, but this was a OG Xbox exclusive. I heard a ton of things about this game. A lot of people love this game. And uh, so I'm definitely going to run through it and check it out. I had to get the limited edition version once I found out that it existed. And it was super cheap. It wasn't very expensive at all. And it's pristine. It looks very nice. I like the foily, shiny cover look. Um, you get two discs. This is a complete... You know, and you get two discs. One disc is bonus content. Uh, this says there's a G4 logo, so maybe some stuff from G4, some video. Um, so that's cool. Jade Empire. Um, Bioware, back when they were really good. So I'm expecting big things there. All right, moving on to PS Fizzle, PS4. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins, I had to pick this up. Um, I wouldn't say I'm the biggest Assassin's Creed dude, but uh, I love like ancient Egypt and like being able to explore open world ancient Egypt is pretty freaking cool to me. And I've been wanting to get this game a while so based on that. Um, it's very similar to why I want I liked Assassin's Creed three uh, because of the setting, you know, independence. Um, so same thing I got this for is for the setting. Zeno, what's up? Uh, yeah, Jade Empires on Steam. Yeah, I figured it probably was. It seems like the type of game that would be there. Um, <clears throat> so, but like I said, I'd like to have that copy if I can, that original copy. All right. Well, when it comes to stuff like that. All right. Wait. Oh, okay. All right. PS4 game, Evil Within 2. Um, I haven't played this yet, but I heard great things. I mean, Shinji Mikami, right? Um, Resident Evil. I'm a Resident Evil fan. I wouldn't say I'm a super uber duper fan, but I expect good things. I heard good things in reviews, so definitely going to check that out. I don't have a ton of PS4 games, so I'm always looking for, I'm looking for specific, you know, games for ps4 my ps4 library another gamecube game i forgot about this um mario golf toadstool tour i actually never played this game not this version well i think i played it i think i rented it um but i never owned it and uh again i'm like so worried about game key prices shooting up and this is one of those games that i always wanted to have um i love Mario Golf on 64 is it's the game that taught me golf, like the rules and just how it works. Cause I did not understand golf at all before that. And so, but I never ended up getting or owning at least Mario Golf for GameCube. Uh, Toadstool's to yeah, Toadstool Tour for GameCube. So looking forward to getting into that. And it is, uh, is it a complete? No, just. Case and disc, which is cool. Artwork. Bonus. All right. And the last, well, this isn't a game I recently picked up. It's just uh, I saw a friend on Twitter saying that he uh, either was looking to get this or getting it on PS3. Um, El Shaddai. And I never, I never hear anybody talk about this game. So it surprised me. Um, and it was funny because at the day before, I was just messing around on YouTube and I saw a review of it and I was like, yeah, should, that's true. I wanted to see what other people thought of it. And so I saw that review. And then the next day, randomly, my, uh, my boy uh, DGC, uh, that game collector, tweeted about it. Um, and I was like, that's weird um, that, you know, I just saw a video on it and now you're tweeting about it. But El Shaddai, this game is known to no one. And it is awesome um it like merges a lot of different types of games like gameplay wise together and so it's really hard to kind of talk about it but it has 
this beautiful creative aesthetic. Um, there's 3D uh, traversal, there's 2D traversal. Um, but what I love about it is the visual art style. Like, so when you're running around, the world is like literally changing around you and it has this real cool, I don't know, cybernetic almost, but still really artsy design to it. You gotta check it out. Like this is totally a hidden gem. Um, I haven't looked up the price on it. I would think it's expensive, but I'm not sure. Cause it's, again, it's an obscure game. Uh, maybe I'll just throw this in my obscure games. I don't think I will do that uh, video. Um, I'll get more in depth in, in, in that. So yeah, El Shaddai, it's on, I don't know if it's on Steam again, but it's on uh, PS3 as well. Um, and yeah, Ignition Games, I don't know who that is. So it's not by a well-known studio or anything. I thought for some reason it was in my head that it was Square Enix, but nope. Um, but very creative, inventive, beautiful art style game. All right, so is it anime-ish? Yeah, it's definitely anime-ish. Um, but I don't. Again, I don't. I think it's like a western, a westerner's version of anime. Um, I don't know if you can really, you can't really see. But you can see from the art and whatnot, it has an anime style to it. I don't think they are a. Yeah, it says Ignition is located in California, so it's not a Japanese company, but it definitely like pulls from that style anime. So, um, very cool though. You should look it up. Look it up on YouTube. El Shaddai. See if you like it. Ascension of the Met Metatron. Metatron. Um, but yeah, yeah, check it out. Look it up, uh, Zeno. All right. <clears throat> uh, oh, I need to get that on eBay, aka Slayer. What, what are you talking about? You need to get which game? Uh, oh, Jade Empire. Or no. Uh, all right. So numbers. All right. So I would like to be able to share this with, on the screen with you guys. But like I said, uh, maybe th some of you maybe missed it. Um, for whatever reasons, I tried three times and three times uh, uh, Streamlabs crashed my computer. Uh, within five minutes. So obviously, we've been on longer than five minutes here. I'm running this straight through YouTube. So um, that's why you don't see all the little fancy doodads <laughs> around me. But it's working fine. So to those who think it's my internet connection and blah, 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 blah. No, it's clearly Streamlabs uh, having issues with my computer or and I try to do an update. I don't know what's wrong. Um, all my other drivers are up to date, so I don't know what the problem is. But let's look at these. I wish I can again. I wish I could share it on screen here, but I can't. Uh, but you guys have seen this, I'm sure already. Uh, Switch has surpassed uh, probably 62 million at this point, which makes it above uh, the Super Nintendo. So therefore, it's better because it's sold more. <laughs> no, um, which is awesome. And, you know, I would love to celebrate and really be happy uh, based on, uh, you know, having more cool games from Nintendo because I had this, you know, uh, belief. Um, and, you know, it doesn't have to live up exactly to my belief, you know, because that would be entitled. It has to do everything I expected it to do. Um, um the one I'm reading here, what is Zeno saying? Maybe uninstall and fresh reinstall. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I mean, I have to. Um, I've done that before, and it worked for a while, so I'll have to do that. It's just, it gets stupid, like you said. <clears throat> so that's what I'll do later on. Uh, but yeah, like, I, my thoughts, my hopes for um, Switch would be, because uh, I always thought it would sell well. <clears throat> so my hopes was that it would return to uh did i share this stream by the way 
I think I did. Um, it would return to uh, its IPs. Nintendo would turn to more of its core IPs uh, because along with the Switch being kind of a gimmick, being, you know, uh, its ability to switch to handheld and all this stuff and tabletop and all that, it still is a very really good core system because it has the elements of Nintendo handhelds along with its home console stuff and you know, looking at what Nintendo had done before with the virtual console and Miiverse and all this stuff and uh, Street Pass and Spot Pass and all these things it was doing, uh, I thought the Switch would be a convergence of most of that, you know, if not all of it. And uh, it hasn't lived up to that. And the fact that they were merging the the 3DS, their handheld studios with their home console studios, there was a belief in me that, yeah, they were, we're going to see more stuff that we would see on handhelds. And that hasn't happened almost at all. Maybe out, maybe the only thing you could say is like uh, Zelda um, uh, Link to the, not Link to the Past, uh, Link's Awakening, the remaster of that. Maybe you can say that's something that kind of hints at that, but that's the only game. Um, unfortunately, and it is, you know, a remaster, but <clears throat> a really good one. Um, but I was hoping we'd get more, you know, Kirby's like we get on 3DS. Those two were fantastic. And the Kirby on Switch is underwhelming, to say the least. And same thing with Yoshi. Um, but so, and you add in, it's the online ser service. And it's just, to me, it's been very disappointing. I want to, because you guys know, I was super crazy about my Switch going into 2018, and that's when it started to slow down. Picked up again in 2019. There was some really good titles, fantastic titles, especially towards the end of the year. But the Switch is just too disjointed, and um, there's too many lulls for me um, because when it shouldn't be that way, uh, where you could say on the Wii U, you know, they were catering to a really uh, hot selling con or hot selling home or hot selling um, handheld. Um, and so a lot of games uh, were coming out there that were really fantastic uh, software. Switch doesn't have that that handicap, if you will. Um, and it just isn't living up to that. And, you know, the highest selling game on it is a port. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's a really good port. It's a port that actually did enhance what was done on the original game. So that was cool. Uh, but that also signaled shadier kind of tactics where they would pull these games off the Wii U and, um, and uh, bring them back at $60 if they do bring them back. Um, for the Switch version, so they went and you know, but here's the thing here's the thing that I think a lot of people are missing about that. Uh, why that's even extra shady because everybody says all the defenders, the defendos say that man, nobody bought a Wii U, right? Nobody bought a Wii U. Um, certainly not even nowhere near the people that bought a Switch. All right, so what I'm saying is. If nobody bought a Wii U and nobody wants to buy a Wii U, right? Because that's the premise. Nobody bought a Wii U, nobody wants to buy it. Then why the hell are you messing with the Wii U version of these games? Is it really going to affect anything that you do on Switch? Is it really going to affect the sales on Switch? Supposedly not, because nobody cares about Wii U. Nobody, everybody, uh, I saw a tweet from some dude, I can't remember who his name is. Uh, oh man, I can't wait till they bring all the Wii U game or Wii U games over the Switch and make the Wii U completely irrelevant. I don't know why he feels like he, he needs the Wii U to be irrelevant. Um, I think that's really strange. Um, that's like inner. That's like inside fanboy. That's almost like it's like light skinned people, light skinned black people hating on dark skinned black people. We're all black. Like <laughs> we're all Nintendo. So why do you want? to make a relevant uh, Nintendo console. I just think that's strange. Um, but the glee um, that he had and that that thread, I just thought it was really weird. Um, so, but anyway, um, it's like, 
am I wrong about that? Because it's like, again, the Wii U doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Nobody buying it. So it's whatever the price is on Wii U isn't going to affect you because nobody cares about that system. Nobody plays on that system. So why go and change or, or take games off of that system uh, when I would guarantee Pikmin staying $20 on Wii U uh, it's not going to affect because nobody cares. It's gone. It's not even doesn't even exist. Um, Pikmin staying twenty bucks on that system. It's not going to affect the Switch. So, because that's the premise, right? So you that's shady. I mean, you know it's shady. There is really no defense of that, and I just don't understand why people want to defend it. So, like I said, well, I want to celebrate what's good and what's going on with the Switch. But I can't when I see stuff like this happening. And we're going to get to a point, if this continues, where this is going to be the norm. And then and then the people who defended it are going to start complaining. But then I'm going to be like, I don't, what you complaining for? I warned you ahead of time. And you did nothing. Um, just like I you know, talked about uh, DLC practices and all that stuff years ago. And that if you go watch that video... Um, there's a lot of thumbs downs on it and look where we are now. It's not like I was going to change the world <laughs> or anything, but it, it would have been nice to think that there were more people that were on the side of themselves. This is for you. This is for you as a consumer um, looking out for you. Um, but there's some people, uh, I forget the quote, uh, but it's something having to do with some people will fight for that bubble, kill for that bubble, you know, because they don't want anybody uh, affecting in any way their joy. You know, they, want, they don't want to take anything away from, you know, their kumbaya, woo, everything is awesome kind of feeling. And they won't only disagree with you. They'll dislike you, <laughs> you know, they'll not like you personally and want to take you down. It is strange. Um, and you wonder, like, so that's why people are so easy, I think. That's why it's something mental in the human mind. I don't know. But that makes that's what makes it so easy to um, uh, just mentally enslave people to to it makes it easier um, to take, you know, to, to, ah, I'm trying to think of this quote. That's why um, I'm caught up in my words here. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll take it from Loki then. Loki in the first Avengers movie, you know, when he's in Germany, he's walking around and tell people to kneel and all that stuff. And he's like, isn't this, uh, I forgot how he worded it, but isn't this your true desire. This is what you really want. You know, you want to have people dictate to you. You you say you don't. You don't you say you want freedom, but you're so quick <laughs> uh, to be grouped up and controlled. Um, and I think I think that's there's something in the human brain that you know will make people fight for that. It's like the Uncle Tom even uh, mentality. Or it's we boss and, <laughs> you know, we like the master would get sick. Uh, the Tom would say, was we sick boss? Um, and he would, you know, openly get in arguments with the people that wanted to get escape. You know, the slaves that want to escape. Why do you want to escape? Look how good we have it here. You know, <laughs> like that's the mentality. So uh, anyway. Oh, Kieran Saunders. Thanks for the two dollar donation there. Um, it's, uh, you're a Bruins fan. I see. Um, that's cool. Um, <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a Yankees fan. Uh, Bruins are obviously hockey though, but that means you're probably a Red Sox fan. So, but you're okay with me today because you're a $2 <laughs> donation. But anyway, all right. So numbers, numbers, let's look at the numbers, man. All right. So you guys have probably already seen all this stuff, I'm sure. So like I said, 62 million plus on Switch. Um, a total of 5.6 million Switch hardware 
and 50.43 million software were sold during the three months ended in June on June 30th. Wow. That's a lot. Um, Nintendo did alter its previously announced forecast. I'm getting this from um, Gamatsu, by the way, the Gamatsu ar ar uh, article. Uh, the top 10 best selling uh, uh, first party Switch titles are number 10, New Super Mario U Deluxe. Uh, I, I hate that. <laughs> I um, uh, And people again, oh man, the Switch. You know, the Wii U didn't sell well, but New Super Mario Brothers U sold very well. And I heard an argument on another podcast, um, which I found to be hilarious because, again, Wii U didn't sell. So I think I should have looked the number up. I think it's about five million or so copies that New Super Mario Brothers U sold on on Wii U, um, which is way more than enough because. If you look at something like, remember Breath of the Wild, right? Breath of the Wild, um, I believe, is, is the most expensive game. If I'm not mistaken, that Nintendo, I think they talked about that. It's their most expensive game that they ever worked on, right? It's the most expensive game they ever worked on. And I think uh, Alnuma, maybe, said it needed to sell 2 million copies to be profitable. 2 million copies of your most expensive game is profitable. Do you think New Super Mario Brothers U was an expensive game to make? Of course not. It probably wasn't a, a third of the cost of uh, Zelda um, Breath of the Wild. So that game sold 5 million um, in Trap. Yeah, I think that's one of the words I was trying to remember, Bruce. Um, that game sold 5 million on Wii U. All right, so a, a, a side argument, as I heard on this podcast, um, uh, it, was, it was a wavy podcast uh, was that oh well that game was bundled <laughs> it was bundled um, I think it was bundled it was much later late in this, the Wii U's life cycle but how many copies do you think that bundle sold because we all know the Wii U did not sell well. Stockholm Syndrome. Thank you, Bruce. Um, we all know the Wii U didn't sell well. So to try to act like a lot of the Wii U sales of that game, New Super Mario Brothers U, was from the bundle is laughable. I, I would be surprised if that bundle sold 100,000 copies of 100,000 units. Because the Wii U did not sell well. 13.5 million. Um, so you're going to tell me that bundle sold millions? Hell no, because the bundle that sold the most, I guarantee you, was the Switch launch bundle with uh, 32 gig, you know, flash memory and Nintendo Land. That is probably the bundle that sold the most easily. Um, so I just I mean, people just make up these excuses and they'll pull them right out of their right out of their hind parts. They'll have no. They're just, oh, this is something I'm thinking in my head. Um, but other times they want, you know, solid numbers. They, they want you to come out with solid numbers. But then they pull stuff like that out of their hind parts to defend um, this. Please. I, New Super Mario Brothers, you probably needed to sell 500,000 copies to be profitable. Um, and it's not just about being profitable. You want to sell and make as much money as you can. So... But they did that really well. Again, on a tiny install base, they sold 5 million units. People, there are companies out there with 35 million, 100 million install base that would be super happy to sell 5 million units of software um, on games that cost way more than this new Super Mario Brothers you needed. And uh, I thought it was the black 32 gigabyte. Wii U bundle with Mario Kart 8. Oh, that that, that might have sold well, too. Um, I'm sure that sold... Again, I think that that sold more than... Uh, I, I, that sold more, certainly more, than the new Super Mario Bros. U uh, bundle sold, by far. LOL, 
says Visor Grunt. Was New Super Mario Brothers U that much of an investment over New Super Mario Brothers Wii? Hell no. <laughs> no. Um, and so it just was a cheap cash grab. You can say what you want to say. Um, and then they charge $60 again for that game. Um, the game that people really got tired of that. I'm not buying another new Super Mario Brothers U game or new Super Mario Brothers game. I need Nintendo to actually put in some effort into the 2D Mario franchise because uh, that is the most bland and everybody knows it and everybody says it. The most bland version or visuals for a 2D Mario game. Um, they need to go back to the drawing board and stop being so cheap with Mario. They just slap Mario on the thing um, and call it a Super Mario Brothers game. It's going to sell like crazy. So that really annoys me. I hate that this isn't top 10, but what can you do when you have fans, like I just mentioned? Uh, Splatoon 2, 10.71 million. Beautiful. Love that. It is a sequel. Would Splatoon 1 sold that much? If you just added some more stuff, probably. It could have. But they made a sequel. And people really responded to it. And that's great. 10 million. That is really good. Uh, here is something that's really bad. Number eight, Super Mario Party. <laughs> Again, I want to celebrate Super Mario Party, but they've done nothing with that game. I think that game still currently has only four boards uh, that you can play on. They've done nothing DLC-wise. This game is perfect for that. Again, disjoint it. Nintendo doesn't know what they're doing when it comes to some of this stuff. Um, it reminds me of Mario Maker 2, um, which is not on this list. Uh, but it reminds me of that because they weren't doing smart DLC, you know, you know, free downloadable content the way they were doing on the first Mario Maker. Um, that's what kept people engaged, uh, the way they delivered the, the uh, DLC for that. But then they just, they really did, it was like six months before they put something new on that game and people just walked away from it. I mean, just look at it online. Look at the, the difference between Mario Maker on Wii U and how it is on Switch and how people just fell off that game way quicker um, than they did the Wii U version. So um, right out of their hind parts, <laughs> says Bruce Kent. Um, but still, I have a complaint about Splatoon 2. They still didn't let us pick maps, time rotation. Yeah, I was gonna, I was actually gonna get into that, Visor Grunt. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I completely forgot, but I did want to talk about that. They, they dropped the ball on that, so they need to pick up that kind of stuff, definitely for three. Because I'm not even going to buy, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to buy three if they continue this same style. Um, uh, the only thing, I think the thing that pushed me over to getting two uh, was the first, uh, the, the one player stuff. Um, they did, it is better, uh, but it's still not where I want it to be. And also the, what's the, what's the, the spawn mode? Um, I can't think of the name of it. I haven't played it in a while. So uh, those are things that push me over. But if they try to come out with Splatoon 3 and it's basically the same thing with rotating maps and I have no control, not nah, it's a pass, not getting it. Because um, I want to be able to pick my map or at least uh, vote on my map uh, the way you do in Mario Kart. Uh, so, yeah. So that is number eight. Number seven is Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Let's Go Eevee at 12.2 million. Ah, uh, boy. Salmon Run. Thank you, Visor Grunt. Um, I, I, I enjoy the rotating maps, says Tebon, but I, I did at first. I didn't mind it, but now it's very tedious to me. Um, I hate getting to a map that I really don't like and just being stuck there or a couple of maps and being stuck there for an hour. Um, cause being able to pick or at least give us a chance to vote gives more variety. I don't want to be stuck with maps, uh, for what is it? Two hour intervals. Nah, 
Because then, because that determines if I'm going to even play. I'll I'll hop on excited to play, and they're in a set of maps that I don't like, and I'm out. You know, so um, let's see. Yeah, Pokemon. Let's go, Pikachu. Let's go, Eevee. I don't have a ton to say about that. I don't really mind that game. Um, uh, it is what it is. You know, it's a remat a remake of uh, Red and Yellow. Or, yeah, Red and Yellow, right? Um, it's whatever, you know, it's not what I thought it was going to be. And I don't think it's what Nintendo thought it was going to be. I think they wanted to be, I want, they wanted it to be more successful than it was, but that ties into their whole, uh, cell phone strategy, which they, they don't feel is working out the way they wanted it to. So, um, so that was seven. Number six is Super Mario Odyssey, or should I say Godyssey? Yes. I wish that it was actually higher on this list, but you know, at 18.06 million. That's very good for a 3D Mario title. Um, so I'm very happy for that. And it's a new game. And boy, was it fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to get back into it uh, uh, and start over. And because uh, I really enjoyed my entire time with that game. And um, it was me at the peak of my Switch love. So I want to recapture that feeling. Um, but I love Odyssey, Godyssey, and uh, it, I mean, I'm not overly salty because about it not having more DLC because I expected a, a sequel to be out by this uh fall. Still could be, they could surprise us and say, you know, Super Mario Odyssey 2, you know, for the, the 35th anniversary, that would be great. So, um, yeah, number five is Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. Again, I, I'm, it's whatever. Um, for me, I was hoping for an evolution of Pokemon, finally. Uh, but it still feels, to me, like they didn't put, put much effort in it past it being a handheld game. Um, and that's, you know, disheartening. Obviously, Pokemon fans didn't care, um, which they <laughs> usually don't. Uh, they'll take a lot of kind of lazy practices when it comes to Game Freak. And until I see an advancement, I'm not feeling it. And I'm actually a little worried about Pokemon Snap. Like, I like Pokemon Snap. I liked it enough, you know, on on uh, N64. Um, but one of the things I liked about it was the, the ability to uh, print out my own photos and stuff. And that kind of was a, you know... Oh, after the game kind of thing or outside the game uh, thing that made it cooler. Um, but I don't just want a prettier version of Pokemon Snap. I hope they do more with it because there wasn't a whole lot to that game. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people liked it a lot, especially younger people, because it was pretty simple and, and they can really get into it. But it needs to be fleshed out more uh, or I'm not even buying that. So... Um, yeah, so number four, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Obviously super happy about that. Um, I believe it's the highest selling uh, Zelda game that we have, which is great. It is great. Um, there are things that I want in the next Zelda that we didn't get in the Zelda. Dungeons, um, you know, bosses, more varied boss battles. I think those things are a given. Uh, now that we're past the, uh, the style of that Breath of the Wild was, you know, the story that it was um, a lot of people didn't care for the story, but I thought there was a lot of story there. You just kind of had to get into it. Um, but, you know, there's some things, you know, the, I'm not sure about the weapon breaking. Like, you know, I liked that it pushed me to try the weapons. Um, I never got into a situation where I was like, man, I don't have any weapons. You know, I never got there. So, and it just made me want to stockpile weapons, which I did which made me want to expand my, um, I forgot what they call it, but expand how many weapons I could carry. So that means you had to look for Korok seeds. So it all kind of tied in together. And so I never had a problem with Now, there are definitely cool weapons that I wish I could keep more, but that makes you, if it never broke, you would be pretty OP. And that would make the game boring to me. So um, I didn't have a problem with it. All right, now we go with number three, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 19.99 million, which is likely over 20 million at this point. 
great game. I'm glad that it's number three. I'm glad it's up there. Um, it deserves it. Uh, number two also deserves it. Animal Crossing New Horizons at 22.4 million. Um, it sold better than I thought it would. I mean, uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf sold, what, 14 million? But that was over the life. Um, for this game to already destroy that <laughs> within the first six months uh, is pretty crazy. Uh, this game will, will probably easily be over 30 million units sold um, at some point. And that's, that's crazy, um, especially for Animal Crossing. Um, I often say it's niche. I, I didn't, the genre is niche, but uh, I think the IP of Animal Crossing has gotten more and more popular. So um, it's cool to see. Number two, the second best selling uh, Switch title behind <laughs> Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which I'm torn on because it's like, um, it's a fantastic game, obviously. Um, they added a lot of cool stuff to this version. Um, but that means Mario Kart 9 isn't happening. And the thing is, I played Mario Kart 8 through and through. So unless I'm desiring playing online, which is, a, a, you know, admittedly a great part of it, um, it's not a new game. Uh, it's just I'm basically playing a new mode that I didn't have in Mario Kart 8. So it's kind of, you know, I, I just wish it, I don't mind it selling well. I just wish it wasn't number one, you know, number seven would be good. You know, put it at maybe 12 million. I would feel better, better about that. But, you know, and now some honorable mentions. Uh, one I'm very happy about, Ring Fit Adventure. I think that game is very underrated, but it's also very undersold because it's hard to find. I think it has to do with the Ring Con. But I love Ring Fit Adventure. I actually got to get back into it because uh, a lot, of, like a lot of people, I gained um, what they call the, the uh, Corn 10. I, I, I think I coined corn 10. I think most people are saying quarantine 15 or corn 15. Um, but I'm, I'm at corn 10 and uh, definitely need to start using my ring fit. <laughs> um, and I will. So it's great that that's at 3.9. And it's also great that Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is at 1.3 million. Um, that's really good because that game deserves sales because um, the original one had like a janky release. It never had a really good chance. Um, on Wii, obviously it had um, <clears throat> a limited uh, you know, sales appeal because it was only in GameStop and it was way at the end of the game, the game system's life cycle, uh, 2011. And then on 3DS, it only worked on new 3DS. So you're missing tens of millions of um, potential buyers because it only worked on the latest version of 3DS because it had more power and had more RAM in it and could run the game. So didn't have a fair release there. And now it finally has a fair release on a console that's very hot and popular. And uh, I'm happy to see that it's doing really well, especially for the type of game that it is. And Clubhouse Games, uh, number three on this list uh, at just over... <laughs> 1 million, which is really good. Um, it looks like a really good game. I haven't gotten it yet. I think I'm going to get it digitally because it's the kind of game you kind of want to have on your system at all times, I think. Um, and so is Animal Crossing, but I, I, I bought it physically. Um, but I think something like uh, Clubhouse Games. But when you, when you buy something digitally, you can't share it with people with other systems. So that's what I have to look at too. I have three switches in my house. So it's like, why would I buy something uh, digitally that I can't share and we can only play on my time, on my terms. So uh, more than 406.7 million Switch games have been sold. 406.7 million. That's nearly half a billion games sold worldwide on Switch and it's also great. And again, I would love to be able to celebrate this stuff more um, because um, I want the sales to benefit me. You know, I'm glad that it's benefiting Nintendo, but I would wish that in turn it would benefit me. Um, so 
Uh, Harui says Smash Ultimate is amazing. It is. I, it's another game I don't play enough, um, but I need to definitely play more of, um, and I will. But I haven't been playing a whole lot of Switch. I've been playing a lot of uh, – a lot of my time has been spent playing retro games, so that has something to do with it. But, um, yeah, these are all phenomenal numbers, you know. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are better than Wii numbers. Um, which, like I said, very early on, very early, I think I said it in January, after the January event, that the Switch would outsell the Wii. Um, now, that is also contingent on them keeping up momentum. Um, it looks like the next-gen set of, uh, consoles are, are going to be coming slow out the gate, but, you know... Sony has um, really good uh, brand recognition. So a lot of people are just going to buy it regardless, you know, because um, I because uh, somebody on I guess we can go into this now. Somebody again on Twitter was talking about, um, you know, no Halo because Halo is being delayed. Um, that's huge. And it, I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but a lot of people are, oh, uh, you know, Halo has to, or Xbox has to justify me buying it, blah, 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 blah. Oh, they talked about the power first. That was a the, the selling point, and they're not showing me that power, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, is this the first time this has happened? Every time Sony has launched a console, it's been about power. Remember, you know, because you can you could navigate Scud missiles or something with, with the PS2. You remember that? Uh, and or maybe that was PS3, and you think PS3 didn't leave with power talking about the power, and that's why it had to be so expensive because it was so powerful. Um, but yet, and still, at the launch of PS1, now PS1 was more modest, uh, but it was PS2 when they started getting a little cocky. PS2, PS3, um, maybe not PS4, um, as much and talking about the power thing. Um, but certainly PS2 and PS3 were touting power. And if you look at their launch lineups, they were pretty whack. Uh, if you look at the launch lineups of every Sony console, they're not fondly looked back on, but yet they don't get the stipulations and complaints that the Xbox console gets. Now I get it. You know, everybody in media, is telling everybody everybody's supposed to dislike Microsoft and dislike Xbox. So Microsoft and Xbox has to start off in a hole uh, built by everyone. Um, so I get it that it has to has to super exceed uh, what it's doing, where everybody else can just kind of be mediocre, <laughs> and it's fine. Um, the only consoles that had um, stellar launch lineups. Um, this this consoles that had stellar launch titles, um, but outside of what Super Nintendo, Dreamcast, and GameCube, you know there hasn't been like this. Oh my God, this system has such a great launch lineup. Mario sixty four sold in sixty fours. It was just that fantastic of a game, but it was Mario sixty four and Pilot Wings, <laughs> and that was it. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot sprinkling out uh, through the end of the year. So, but that was a huge killer app, and I get that. Um, but, you know, the system didn't beat PlayStation 1, you know. It still got beat. Um, if you count Japan, it got beat in Japan by even the Sega Saturn. So, I'm talking about as far as launch lineups, complete Great launch lineups. Um, N64 had a great launch game, system seller, but didn't have a great launch lineup. I was there day one, and I only had two games when I went home because um, that's all they had. There was no other games I couldn't when I couldn't afford more. There was only two games, um, and then you have Super Nintendo, which had pretty good games at launch. Um, it was probably one of the best launches. And then you have Dreamcast, 
which launch was amazing and didn't save that system. Um, and then you have GameCube, which I thought had a really good launch, a lineup. But GameCube didn't sell well, <laughs> regardless of its launch lineup. Uh, N64 sold decent um, when overall, when it's all said and done. Um, and, you know, Super Nintendo obviously did. So there's no really rhyme or reason to this stuff. Um, I just find it funny because Sony is allowed to release mediocre launch lineup after mediocre launch lineup, and nobody says, oh, I got to have a game that sells me on this system, blah, blah, blah. People still go out and buy these systems. Now, PS3 was a little bit shaky, um, but PS1's launch, well, they have Jumping Jack Flash or whatever. <laughs> they didn't have any stellar titles, and yet it went on to be the best-selling console of that generation. PS2, again, its launch lineup was super weak. The Bouncer and other trash, yet it went on to be the most highest-selling console of all time um, because it sustained itself. It started to come out with you know, major titles and uh, a lot of exclusives at that point. Um, PS3 launch lineup was garbage. Um, but they turned it around uh, in the later years, and that system ended up selling, what, 86 million units? So, but only when it comes to Microsoft. They have to, you know, um, yeah, I mean, it totally sucks that Halo Infinite is not going to be at launch, but that's not going to stop me from buying it at launch. I bought a PS3 at launch, you know, like, because of what it was supposed to do, you know? But Microsoft doesn't get that slack, you know, because they haven't proven themselves, <laughs> I guess. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's strange. Oh, oh, they led with power, blah, blah, blah. So did the PS3. They led talking about power and um, all that stuff. And they didn't have nothing to show for it at launch. But nobody, that didn't stop the PS3. That didn't stop Sony fanboys. <laughs> like They still went out and bought the console. I wasn't a fanboy, and I went out and bought it. Um, because of the same reason I'm buying an Xbox Series X. I bought a PS3 day one for the same reason I want to buy an Xbox Series X day one. You know what that is? Backwards compatibility. Backwards compatibility was a huge reason that I bought a PS3 at launch. And I still have it. It still plays PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. That mattered to me. So trying to tell me not to buy a Series X for that same reason, actually a better reason, because not only does it play my old games, it enhances them. I can play, you know, old games from the fifth gen or sixth gen, right? Sixth gen uh, at 4K, 60 frames or more. That's awesome. So for me, that is a huge selling point. Again, I get why you guys don't care about that or a lot of you guys don't care about that. But again, that was the same reason I bought a PS three at launch, like I said, because I could take all those games I already had and move them over to that system. Um, it didn't enhance it, but the Xbox Series X does enhance them. So that's all it takes for me. Um, and there will be games at launch, you know, but I wasn't, I wasn't excited for anything at launch. I don't even think I bought a launch game <laughs> for PS3. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Uh, buy a launch game for my PS3. I was happy to be able to play Blu-rays in it. That was another thing. Blu-rays. And uh, to bring over all those games. So I, I think it's hypocritical, man. And I just see right through it, and it I just find it annoying. And I understand, because this is the industry politics that we're dealing with. Xbox bad, Sony good. I get it. 
I see it, but I don't fall for it. So um, let's see what you guys are saying. I'm backing it up, backing it up. <sighs> uh, Harui. No. An eight mil increase. It's an eight mil increase. I'm not sure what you're saying there. I'm talking about there. Josh Brown, if you get... If each game cost it 20 bucks, that would be $8.1 billion. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. Harui, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Son will set. Oh, well. I don't. I, you'll stop selling. Is that what you're saying? Um, jumped again. All right. Harui, Nintendo games are mostly worth the price. Uh, yeah, new ones. Uh, Harui, Ring Fit Adventure. I have that. Cool. Props to Xenoblade 1. Uh, Jonathan Reed, most gamers aren't like us. They don't buy consoles early. And if they do, they buy for future games, which that's always been the case. Um, I'm just stating people running around saying, oh, man, why? what's the point of buying an Xbox Series X at launch? No Halo, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, and these are probably some of the same people that have done this. Went out and bought a new console with nothing really to show for it. No, no real killer app to show for it. Um, you know, that's, that's what I have an issue with. And that's who I'm talking to. Because these are people that I know did these things. That I know are the type of gamers that have done this. You know, they tout this. They tout that. They're, day, they're, day, day, they're there day one. Uh, for a lot of the systems that I know didn't have great launch lineups and launch games. Um, for me, there was no reason to go out and buy a 360 uh, day one. I mean, yeah, it had backwards compatibility, um, but I wasn't overly into Xbox at that time. Like, I had some Xbox original games, and the backwards compatibility was kind of hit or miss. It was certain games. You had to download the patch, and, like, I was like, no, nah, I'm not really feeling that. PS3 was just like, put your game in, you play it. So that's why I made it more easy. And also the Blu-ray, because I know Blu-ray was going to be the next thing. And uh, Xbox 360 didn't have that. So I didn't buy it at launch. So those are the things. I bought, a, I bought an Xbox 360 in, what, 2007? 2007. So... All right. Uh, Harui, GameStop resold new games as used. Yep, they would rip them out of new packages and sell them as used. I don't know how that was legal um, to do that. Uh, I guess they owned them, but it was really shady. Uh, Josh Brown, Sony has no mascot, no crash, doesn't count. Well, they got, you know, Kratos, which <laughs> doesn't really fit for me, and um, Nathan Drake, I guess, but I'm not sure if he's going to be it going forward. You know, that's the thing about Sony. Uh, like, I don't have that one series that I can always count on uh, to keep me buying their systems, to keep me caring about them, because um, they move on. Some people like that, but I like a, a solid series I know is going to be around. And the problem is they make, um, or at least up until PS4, they make too many sequels, you know, on one system, and they burn out. Their ideas. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, Malik JC, N64 and Switch had a great launch game. Uh, yeah. They both had a great launch game. But my point was uh, that isn't always what you need. Uh, to warrant buying a system, if you look traditionally. PlayStation didn't have a launch, a great launch game. It still sold really well at launch. And uh, a lot of it had to do with brand recognition and the fact that uh, Sega faltered with Saturn. Um, like I said, no PlayStation system, at least to my knowledge, has had, oh my God, that's still a great launch title that you have to buy the system for. Um, you buy it for brand recognition for the most part. 
Uh, only in only Nintendo consoles really have uh, you know big first party games, and their consoles are hit and miss as far as how they do in the generation. So, but people still buy new consoles without oh my god, look, this is why I bought the system for type of games. So, Switch has the killer app Breath of the Wild. Um, again, I'm not sure <laughs> why you guys are pointing that out because uh, N64 had a killer app, but that didn't mean the system. That that doesn't mean you, uh, that's not the only reason a person has to buy your console. Some people just want the upgrade, and that's why I bought a PS3 because I wanted the upgrade, um, the the convenience of being able to play all my games on one system. That's why I want a Series X. The convenience of being able to play all these games on one system, along with the enhancements and the potential of uh, occasionally getting, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, 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 the Game Pass, which is a great service. Uh, Josh Brown, yes, which launch has to be the best based on Breath of the Wild alone? N Oh, so you guys are trying to say which is the best launch lineup ever? No. <laughs> no, one game is not... I don't, it's a great game. Again, Mario 64 was a great game, but that doesn't make the... That doesn't make the N64... I, N64 is my favorite console of all time, so I'm coming at this with zero bias. N64... Oh, I, I should come at this with bias, being that the N64 is my favorite console of all time, but I'm not... That's just kind of... <laughs> it's just wrong. You can't say... The best launch line of all time when you only have two games. I'm talking about overall launch lineup. I think GameCube and Dreamcast were the best overall launch lineups that you could have, but they didn't translate to great sales for either of those consoles. So, um, and you know, again, just having so you have one great must have game in Mario 64. Again, Mario's the N64 did well, but it got trounced. By PS or PS1, so people buy things for different reasons. Um, PS3 was difficult to program for, yep, and it still came in second place to the Wii. It still came around and beat 360 at the end, because um, Sony's brand is very strong, and they, you know, they um, they made the Slims and they did what they had to do. Uh, Harui, PS4 one with the huge, with the huge blunder. I don't know what you're saying there. Jay Biggs, what up? Ms. T and the chat. What's up, Jay? Uh, Josh Brown, what up, Jay? Um, oh, I just, I hate when it jumps. I'm just trying to scroll down and it completely jumps. Let's see. Harui switches my primary system. And I prefer Atlas and JRPG, so I buy a PS5 for Persona 6. Okay. So you're buying it for one game, basically. I mean, you know that you're probably sure that there are going to be other games on it that you would buy it for. And you're, so you're buying it for Persona 6. Um, okay. Sony kills IPs left and right. Yes, Zeno. <laughs> A lot of IPs that I like from Sony are gone. Uh, Jack and Daxter. I'm surprised Ratchet and Clank is still around. Jack and Daxter. Um, uh, SOCOM I actually liked for a little while. Uh, they're gone. Uh, what else? Uh, Gran Turismo still around. Um, oh my God, what's the series I'm trying to think of? Again, remember. Uh, oh, um, um, Siphon Filter. Gone, um, Crash doesn't belong to them anymore. I wasn't crazy about Crash, but Crash was a, a decent uh, platforming distraction. Um, but they don't hold on to anything. They have no. For me, they don't have enough identity. And, um, I like JRPGs and everything, but I can get those on Switch. Uh, I don't need twenty thousand JRPGs per system. I need a good solid four, five. You know, so that makes my, you know, makes me, you know, satisfied. Uh, 
Last Sony system I played was PS2, and I mostly played Vice City, Ready to Rumble 2, and Driver 2 on that. Wow. So not a lot of experience with the old PS2 or Sony <sighs> from Jay there. Hello, Ready to Rumble. I love Ready to Rumble. I love it. I would say Super Nintendo had the best launch. I would probably agree with that. It had good variety, but it also had like great must-have titles. Um, so I would probably agree with that. Um, and you know, titles that showed you why you needed that more power. Um, I mean, Mario, Super Mario World did that alone for me. When I saw that giant bullet bill <laughs> going across the screen, I was like, yep. Time to pass on his NES. Um, Josh Brown, I'm, I just mean the best launch game, not the best launch lineup overall. Okay, yeah, I mean, I figured that's what you meant. Um, Mario 64 is the best launch game because obviously it was revolutionary as hell. Uh, it defined 3D platformers, just 3D games in general. It, it showed people how to do it the correct way because people... It was garbage before Mario 64, just pure garbage and garbage after as well, but certainly before it. Um, but uh, it was just a game that just blew your mind. It was just mind blowing to come from 2D side scrolling platformers to Mario 64. Um, and it, it showed you why you needed an N64. Uh, it did things that no other console was doing. So it, it, it did everything well. Um, it, I just wish, in hindsight, I wish they would have had a few more titles there because I think, you know, Mario 64 obviously did really well um, for the N64 as far as selling it. Um, but I think, you know, that's another couple titles here and there would have really drove it home, and I think it would have ended up doing better overall, but who knows? Um, let's see. <clears throat> Jay Biggs, NC4 is my least favorite game or Nintendo console. Oh, yes, you're right, Inglorious. Blasphemy. I don't, <laughs> I don't get that at all. Um, um, you know. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't, I don't understand that. Um, it was, I guess, I mean, I mean, maybe it depends on how old you are or where you were at that time. Uh, to me, the N64 was so good. I couldn't play PlayStation games like they, or I just, they just totally felt off to me um, because, you know, obviously N64 was more powerful and the 3D just looked way better on the N64. You didn't have those wobbly, wonky uh, texture walls and stuff. It was solid. Um, it had its, you know, it had its issues. But a lot of people act like N64 was the only co console that had frame rate problems. Like PlayStation had frame rate issues too, <laughs> you know, but nobody really talks about it. Um, because more people were playing N64, that's why, even though they owned a PlayStation. Um, yeah, that's blasphemy, though. <laughs> if they didn't bring out Suda51, I would never have bought a Switch. Sometimes that's all it takes. There you go. Suda51 came out, and you were like, yes, no more heroes. You got excited. Um, I was very excited as well, but I still, you know, <clears throat> I might have waited to buy a Switch if Breath of the Wild was, you know, wasn't uh, downgraded on Wii U. Because um, I was going to get only the Breath of the Wild for Wii U because of the gamepad, but then they took the gamepad stuff out. So, um, sometimes that's so. Uh, let's see. Zeno, one of the main reasons I got Sony consoles was for Digimon RPG games. Okay. Harui, having a killer app doesn't mean your console will be a success, but it helps for the Switch because it started life too late in the generation. Uh, correlation doesn't mean causation. 
Um, yeah, it helped, but it's not the reason the switch is a success. Uh, the switch is a success because of its form factor, uh, the ability to switch. It's a Nintendo handheld and a home console, and that handheld uh, part of it is a huge seller for it. So, um, having Breath of the Wild obviously didn't hurt it. I mean, it, it needed uh, a killer app, um, but you know, the killer app is a Wii U game. Um, but you know, again, a lot of people didn't buy Wii U, so the way they were going to play Breath of the Wild was on Switch. Uh, let's see, JBig Switch started the new generation. Um, I tend to think that, but I, I don't even know if Nintendo cares about generations anymore. Um, people say Microsoft doesn't care, but I'm not even sure Nintendo looks at it as generations at this point. They're just like, we're going to put our console up when we want to. We'll make sure it's different enough that people care about it as well. And uh, that's how they play it. So, Josh Brown, Mario 64 is my most anticipated 3D remake. Hoping and praying for it. Um, I don't know. For me, I've played that game so much. Yeah, it'd be cool to see it in a different art style, but I hope they do more to it, you know? Uh, expand on it, not just do a, a, a visual swap, but actually add more to the game. Because, um, you know, playing that game with modern visuals might feel disjointed. Because it's, you know, it's an old... It's an old kind of gameplay setup. Um, not game. It's not game. The gameplay is fine. It's an old. It's a you know today in today's standards, it's a very small game, and I'm just wondering if it'll hold. And you know if it'll hold my interest uh, beyond. Wow, look at the visuals for a little while. You know. Uh, let's see. Jonathan Reed. Uh, oh wait. Harui says, I got, oh no, even further back. And jump, it keeps jumping. Uh, Jay Biggs, I was 16, 17 when it came out. I didn't like PS1 either. Okay, so you were the same age as me. Um, uh, but it wasn't your favorite. So what were you playing? <laughs> you didn't like the PS1. And N64, uh, you didn't care for. Were you a Saturn guy or what were, what were you doing? PC? Let me know. Uh, Harui, I got a N64 for, as my first console, so I enjoy my nostalgia blinding me. But even I have to admit, the Switch is a sales, be sales beast. If you want to convince me, keep sales out of your argument. It has nothing to do with the gamer's enjoyment. Uh, Switch is a sales beast for JRPGs and Wii U ports. Um, just say it's a beast. Like I don't, I don't, sales mean nothing to me. One of my favorite consoles of all time is the Sega Saturn, and it didn't sell for crap. So, and it has great RPGs as well. And it didn't have a bunch of ports of games I already played. So, um, again, for somebody like me who's had other systems. Switch is not going to be, you know, that exciting. I played all these games before. If I wanted to play them, I had the chance to play them other systems. So these games are not new to me. Uh, let's see. Jay Biggs. I hated the N64 controller. I only really like Mario 64, Star Fox 64, Zelda Ocarina of Time, NWO, WCW. That's a lot of games, bro. <laughs> like, that's a lot of stuff there um some of the best games on the system but uh to say you you hated the n64 controller um that's also blasphemous <laughs> i got a few videos on the n64 controller disdain and i don't understand um maybe it was a little big but i my hands are a decent size so uh, let's see, Ultimate Sacrifice. I bought a Wii U for Splatoon and was very satisfied. 
there you go. I think Splatoon was a system seller um, on a system that didn't sell very well. But obviously, if you look at the sales number of Splatoon, it did pretty well. Uh, let's see, Jay Biggs. I didn't really like Doom 64 and Duke Nukem 3D till they came out on Switch. Why? <laughs> it's that Switch, that Switch polish, it's the Switch sheen that makes people like games that they didn't like before. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I know they run better. Um, and Doom 64 was very dark. Uh, I will admit that. I didn't like that about the game. I had to always turn up my brightness on my TV. And it still looked like crap, you know, because it was too bright. But um, I love Duke Nukem, though. Um, but the better version is the un, um, the unfiltered version, which is the PC and now the Switch game. Uh, let's see. Didn't really like. Oh, okay, I read that. Jay Biggs. I hope they remake Mario sixty four using Odyssey Engine. Yeah, I mean, again, I like uh, the thought of that. Sounds great, but I'm worried because um, you remember those all these Unreal Engine Mario sixty four mods that are out there and whatnot, or you know, projects that are out there. They look good, but they look off as well because they look too good for the type of game Mario sixty four is. So I'm worried if they don't add more to Mario 64, um, you know, because I played that, you know, that section of Odyssey when you open, when, when you defeat it, and you open up basically Mario 64. Um, it's cool. Um, but it's just, you know, I'm worried that it might be off as far as playing it. Jay Biggs hated Saturn those years. I stopped playing when I played it. it. Was still mostly SNES Genesis until '99. Okay, so you were still on uh, your 2D consoles, your 16-bit game consoles, and I was still doing that too. I still played Super Nintendo heavy uh, in the late '90s. So let's see. Uh, stop jumping. Uh, was it IPAC men? I something how Waluigi get his own. You hope Luigi get his own franchise. Waluigi gets his own franchise. I hate Waluigi. You know me. <laughs> you know I can't stand Waluigi. I think he's the cheapest character ever created, ever designed, uh, and that name is just so lazy. Uh, the future, or at least piggybacks as a secondary character, secondary antagonist in the new for the Luigi's Mansion series. Yeah, I would like to see him, you know, probably get a bigger role in something. You know, be, in, be a boss character. Uh, let's see. Jonathan Reed. Jay was playing basketball. Okay. Uh, Jay Biggs hated. Oh, I read that already. It jumped again. Uh, I pack. I Pac-Man. I had a PlayStation N64. I played more PlayStation as I enjoyed Spyro and Rayman. However, looking back, I missed out on a lot, as I only had Kirby and Pokemon. Oh my God! You used your N64 so wrong. You only had Kirby and Pokemon. So you miss those great rare games. You miss Goldeneye. You miss Banjo Kazooie and Tui. You missed Jet Force Gemini. You missed Perfect Dark. You missed uh, uh, Rogue Squadron. You miss. I mean, there was so many great games. You didn't even have Mario sixty four, Wave Race, Pilot Wings. Man, N64 had some great titles. I can't wait till I do my live um, N64 collection. Let's see. Jay Biggs. Oh, he's talking to Jonathan there. Um, Malik JC. N64 was my first console. Got it on my fi uh, fifth birthday back in 2000. God, 
Your fifth birthday, huh? Your young, <laughs> your young behind so. You were five in the year 2000. Good gracious. Good gracious, you youngsters. Um, Jay. Pretty much, it's the switch magic that does it every time. <laughs> it's, it's like switch sprinkles on games that you didn't care about before. Um, oh, I just saw Terminator Juice and it jumped. All right. All right. Terminator Juice. I don't know if you mentioned this yet, but the whole it's got new content. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the whole it's got new content argument. For Wii U ports is dumb because people who are buying these ports didn't play the game anyway. Factual. So if you didn't play the game and you talk about new content, the whole game is new content to you. That's not a selling point. That's not a point for it to be sixty dollars. If you, I mean, if you want to happily go out and spend sixty dollars on something, you probably shouldn't be. Uh, because it shouldn't be that cost. Then go right ahead, I guess. But don't be upset when $70 games come and $80 games come. Because uh, you're setting these standards. But that is a strange argument. Or the people here, here's another argument that I just, I, I that's the switch magic argument. This is another one. These dudes who say, Oh, they, they're excited for Pikmin 3 coming or whatever other game. But I've heard five different YouTubers say this. Pikmin 3. Oh, yeah, I got that on Wii U. I didn't finish it, but I'm excited for it to come to Switch. What? <laughs> you didn't care enough to beat that game, especially at the time it came out on Wii U. There was nothing else around. You had plenty of time. There wasn't a whole lot in the industry, period. But there wasn't nothing around for you to stop you from playing that game and beating that game. Um, so you couldn't be bothered to finish it on Wii U. But you're acting like you're excited for a Switch version of it. You like you don't you didn't care. <laughs> you didn't care then. Why do you care now? Switch magic. I mean, come on. It, it's 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 strange, and these are grown adult men. It's one thing if there's you know, and not just grown adult, but older grown adult men, thirties plus. Like, come on. If you didn't care about that game then, why are you caring about it now? And why would you? You have it. You currently have it on Wii U. Oh, I don't feel like hooking it up. Okay, blah blah blah. All this nonsense. Um. I, I know I understand I have a different setup here where I still have my Wii U right here hooked up, sitting right next to my Switch. And not everybody has that. I don't want to hook it up. But I don't want to hook it up means you should spend $60 on a game you already own. That's kind of – that you obviously didn't care enough to beat the first time. I, I just find that very strange and kind of shillish. It feels shillish to me. I don't know. You tell me. Um, let's see. Oh, I read that. Uh, scroll slightly down. Malik JC Mega 64 was amazing. They need to finish the trilogy. Oh, you Mega Man. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, they need to. I never played two, and it's super expensive. Uh, on, I'm about to emulate that. <laughs> But it's really expensive on PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 1. Mega Man. Um, Mega Man Legends 2. And they were going to finish it on, on 3DS, but they quit. And it looked good. So I don't know why. Um, Malik J or give it a Spyro Clash remaster. I mean, that um, Clash or Crash. I think you're saying, trying to say Crash. Um, yeah, that would be cool. I'd be down for that. Uh, let's see. Jumpy, jumpy, jumpies again. Jumpy, jumpies. All right, here we go. Josh Brown. I think people, media, uh, talking shiz about the Wii U 
is a large part of why they didn't get more third-party support and the system didn't sell well as well as it should have. I totally agree. The media did not help Wii U, but they'll help Wii U too, <laughs> a.k.a. Switch, all day. And uh, they all fell for the BS when it came to Wii U. And I'm supposed to just swallow your perspective on Switch? Nah, I don't believe you. I still don't believe you. You go, those guys go with the flow. They go with the wind. Wherever the, where their fart goes in the wind, that's where they go. Um, Jay, I always, I was always a console gamer. Never played on PC. I think of PCs for work, internet, and porn. <laughs> Not games. Maybe Minesweeper and Solitaire. Oh, you're missing a lot, man. I mean, I hate PC, but I like playing PC games. From time to time, or games on PC, but I, I hate PCs. They're a pain in the you know what. Uh, juice the value of new content in these old ports goes out the window with the no one played these games on Wii U argument. <laughs> facts. Did you say this in your stream as well? These are facts, my man. Josh Brown, LMAO. Waluigi is the cheapest character ever made. Yeah, like, Wario is clever, you know? Obviously, he's just a evil Mario. Um, but he's clever. You just take the M in Mario, flip it upside down, Wario. So he's an opposite. Makes sense. Right off the bat. Perfect. Completely makes sense. But to take the Wa from Wario and throw Luigi after it is so cheap. Wow, Luigi. That's just you gotta you gotta come with something better than that. That to me, that is so lazy and lame. Uh, it doesn't work for me. But I know a lot of people like Wow Luigi. Wow Luigi and Smash. I hear it all the time. Uh Josh Brown says true. <clears throat> um I forget I like Smash Brothers on N64. What a great commercial. One of the greatest gaming commercials of all time was that Smash 64 commercial. Oh my God, Rogue Squadron and Wave Race, my childhood, says Josh Brown. Yeah, man, N64. Uh, unless you're talking, <laughs> you could be talking about GameCube. I don't know. Uh, unless you're talking about Rogue Squadron 2 and Wave Race Blue Storm. But if you're talking Wave Race N64, Rogue Squadron uh, 1 on N64, great stuff. Uh, my first, oh, I jumped again. Jonathan Reed, my first son was born. Wait, I'm confused now. Oh, okay. You're saying because uh, what's his name? Said he was five. <laughs> my first son was born in 2000s, Jonathan Reed, and he is now a big Zelda fan. Nice. Uh, Jay Biggs, most of my Switch games are games I somehow missed on 360. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a couple. Uh, stuff like um, Red Faction Remastered. Um, I don't have much. I probably have three or four games that are 360 ports. Three to five. Jay Biggs. I got Pikmin 3 on Wii U when they that Club Nintendo giveaway. Oh yeah, you can, buy, you can get it digitally. In hindsight, I should have picked New Super Mario Brothers U which I end up having or buying later and on Switch again. Why would you buy that? Why? Um, Juice, I hate the I can't wait to play insert Wii U game there portably. Do they mean portably at home or on the go? Because you could play them portably at home on Wii U. <laughs> Too many facts there, Juice. Too many facts. But the range, couldn't it, the, the range wasn't the same. Um, I never had a range issue until I got to the third floor of my house on Wii U. Um, I can go in the bathroom <laughs> with it the same way I do with Switch. So obviously there are limitations. But yeah, who cares about playing port? I mean, like, I, guess, I mean, I guess, like, 
if you travel a lot, but I'm talking about it, that's a small percentage of people as far as playing portably certain games. Like, because almost every game on, on Wii U you could play portably on the couch, you know, you didn't have to be tethered to a TV. So let's see. Um, Uh, stop, stop jumping. Okay, Jay, I forced myself to play Pikmin 3 for 20 hours and said I don't like this. I just remember seeing the first one in my house on GameCube. Um, yeah, I didn't, I, I wasn't a huge fan of first Pikmin, I didn't like the time element of it, and I like Pikmin 2 much better. And Pikmin 3 is my favorite, so uh, but I can see where some people may not be into Pikmin. Uh, I put it and took out the tr in wait. I put it in and took out, took it out in five minutes and said this, and said it was, is this trash? Well, what is this trash? Okay. No, no fan of Pikmin. <laughs> or is it Pikmin? Yeah, I think that's what you're talking about. I Pucklin. I'm not seeing a reason to buy a PS5, honestly. Yeah, me neither. I mean, like I said, without the games, I, I, mean, I already gave the reason for why I'm getting a Series X because value. Um, I have an OG Xbox. I have a ton of Xbox games from original Xbox to Xbox One that I can play on it. And I can put it all in one system. Have it all nice and neatly there. I have no affinity for original hardware when it comes to Xbox. Nintendo and Sony or the Nintendo and Sega are only, only systems where I'm like, man, I, I need to play on that original hardware. So it jumped again. Ah. Uh, Bruce Kent. Why are you sprinkling switch magic all over the place? <laughs> Uh, all willy nilly. Um, uh, chaotic Walio. Are you trying to <laughs> give Waluigi a better name? Chaotic. Uh, Juice. Man, Juice just keeps dropping stuff here. I forgot to make that point about the new content in my live stream. I thought of that while I was at work, and then it slipped my mind when I started streaming. Yeah, that happens. I hate when I, that happens. Uh, Malik JC, whatever happened to that movie tie-in and double A games? Licenses like 007, Star Wars, and other TV shows had decent games in the late 90s and mid 20s. I think it has to do with money. I think licenses are more expensive, probably. And obviously game design or game development costs are higher. So I think that's why you see less licensed games. And I think if you see a licensed game today, it will most certainly be trash, where back in the day, some licensed games were pretty good. I thought Van Helsing was better than the movie. That movie was trash to me, but I thought the game was pretty good. Um, there's more I can't think of right now, but there's a few licensed games. Oh, Spider-Man, stuff like that. Obviously, a lot of the superhero-type games. Um, Lord of the Rings, I thought, were great games. So... I think it's money. I think it's a budget thing. Nobody wants to pay for the license. And development costs are very expensive for games today. Uh, T Juice. Pikmin will be hard to play in handheld mode with all those tiny ass Pikmin on that screen. Yes. Nobody's mentioned that. But, you know, I, I mean, I don't like the idea of not using the Wii Remote and Nunchuck or something close to that to control Pikmin. But, yeah, looking at that little looking at little Pikmin on a little screen, having to try to aim. I guess you can use the touch screen, but that's not gonna be fun management for me. Pikmin is not a handheld game. It is not. So I don't think it will translate well. Let's see, I'd love to be able to play all my Nintendo games on a single system without having to rebuy them. That would be great if Nintendo set up a situation where that was a thing. Felt like they were starting to do that with Wii, uh, Wii U, but they completely abandoned it, um, unfortunately. Josh Brown, I have a theory about Nintendo as a company. They want that I want all y'all to hear. 
Jay Biggs, yeah, I was talking about Pikmin, and the same thing happened on with Animal Crossing. <laughs> so those aren't your style of games. So how are you feeling about this year on Switch? Since you those aren't your type of games. Did you get Paper Mario? Well, let me know, Jay. I'd love to be able to play all oh, I read that already from Terminator Juice. Jonathan, I'm I'm upgrading. Xbox Series X backwards compatibility and third-party games already run and look better on my Xbox One X. Yeah, so you're making a practical decision. That's what I'm doing. I'm making a practical decision based on value for me to buy a Series X. Um, Jay Biggs, the only games I could stomach to play on first Xbox was Dead to Rights, third-party game. Max Payne, third-party game. I hated that Duke controller. Ah, see, I, I didn't have the Duke controller. Um, I have the controller Type S, which uh, I believe... That's going to be a disaster, isn't it? No, it's fine. I believe... Oh, it's no longer in here. Crud. Let's see. Stuff falling on me. Wait, no, what is it doing? No, no, stop. No, what happened? It's like frozen. Are we still live? I got to check my phone. I can't tell if we're live right now because my. My. Um, I can't see. Chat or anything. All right. Looks like we're still live on my phone here. Now I'm getting feedback. All right. So that's weird. I don't, my, uh, let me turn the audio down. All right. Um, yeah, the controller type S. Give me a second. Let me see if I can grab that bad boy. Japanese people like making that big ginormous console. Uh, so they, I believe they launched with the controller type S. I know they didn't have Duke. They launched with this controller. Um, and this is much more, you know, much better. Um, I like this controller a lot. So, all right. I don't know why. Oh, that's why. If you just read, you can see. Um, all right, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Good stream, T. I'm out this bitch. Just turn into juice. Peace out, juice. If you're not already gone, this thing was, uh, it froze up on me, so I didn't know. All right, let me back up here. La, 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 la. Whatever happened. All right, so I read it already. Jay Biggs, I like New Super Mario. Jay Biggs, I like New Super Mario Brothers U. I didn't. <laughs> no, it was New Super Mario Brothers U was actually okay. Um, it was it had good challenge. For where I felt like the other ones were, you know, a little bit cheaper. I think they. You know, they did, they thought a little bit more about the level design and difficulty in Mario Bros. U. So I did like it uh, much better than New Super Mario Bros. Uh, Wii or even New Super Mario Bros. on 3DS or DS, the original New Super Mario. Um, so yeah. Uh, Harui on the go during the pandemic. Uh, Pikmin 
Juice said Pikmin 3, or Pikmin will be hard to... Oh, I read that already. Uh, I have a theory. Okay, so I'm past this. Uh, I hated the Duke controls. That's the last one. Okay. Bruce Kent, I'm not going to stand here and defend Waluigi. The irony of your statement is that it is the bane of Waluigi's the bane of Waluigi's whole internal struggle, breaking the fourth wall, always making him uber meta. <laughs> uh, there is that. Uh, then surprisingly between 2008, oh, I think he's talking to somebody else there. Oh, maybe not. Uh, between 2008 and 2013, 360 became my favorite system till I got a Wii U, says Jay Biggs. Interesting. Um, Harui, I'm a portable gamer. Even I see the portability argument in a pandemic is not a good reason, but I wrote this year off already. <laughs> yep, so have I, Harui. Um... Uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe will sell good, though. I'm not sure. I mean, I think it'll sell fine, but I don't think it's going to be like a two, three, four, five, six million seller. I don't think so. I just think Pikmin has sold consistently on each console it came out on. Uh, it sold a million on... The first one sold a million, too, on GameCube. The second one sold a million, too, Pikmin 2. And then you get the Wii, and they sold less. Um, they were ports, obviously, but you know they had enhanced play control, which is what I love. Um, uh, so Pikmin one and two uh, with play control uh, using the using the Wii remote uh, was much better to me to control Pikmin. Uh, but both of those games combined on Wii sold 1.2 million units, and then you have Pikmin three on Wii U, which I believe sold. 1.1 or 1.2 million units. So um, it's going to be a Donkey Kong Country tropical free situation where, oh, they looked at that and said, oh, here's a fantastic game that didn't sell great. Let's put it on Switch. It sold better than Wii U, but it's nothing stellar. It wasn't like, oh, my God, I think it's a little bit over 2 million or something like that on uh, Switch for tropical freeze. So I think that's where... You know, between two and three million, maybe uh, Pikmin's going to sell, and that's I think that's being generous. It's just you know, it's the genre, it's the type of game that it is, the strategy-based game, um, and it doesn't really lend itself well to to me uh, for a handheld game. So, let's see, I won the first Xbox in the contest, but I sold it to pay car fare. To get my new job and Xbox 360 was coming out. No regrets, says Jonathan Reed. Um, I feel like I missed something up here. Oh, yeah, Josh Brown theory Nintendo is cheap and stingy as eh. hence the online problems, the ports, the old games that never drop in price. I mean, yeah, um, they're cheap in a lot of ways and they try to get by uh on ideas which is good because uh, you know uh what's that saying um <sighs> lack of resources breeds creativity um which uh for the most part is true when it comes to nintendo not everybody but it's fairly true. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Jo Who's talking here? Yeah, I read that already. Josh Brown and resistance to make a more powerful console. There's just no. Oh, first he said. First, Josh Brown said extremely slow on new IPs. Um, and then he goes and resistance to make. A more powerful console there's just no reason not to now 
honestly, as much as they charge us for everything else. I mean, I don't think it needs to be the super powerful console, but it probably need, they probably need to be a little bit more powerful than they are. I like the Switch idea. I think they should continue that to differentiate themselves. Um, but also, that also breeds, uh, you know, what do you call it? third party indifference, you know, like they rather just not put in the work. So if you know that's going to be the case, I don't mind you doing what you're doing. If you know that's going to be the case. You have to invest more uh, making games that Nintendo doesn't typically make. That's why I said they need to bring back NST or and or left field and make something some new Western studios. I think they need at least two more or because they have retro who haven't made anything <laughs> in quite some time, but they need a couple more studios to make games they don't normally make to keep the flow co going, you know, because they're going to lose out on day and date new third party games if they continue with the, you know, their ideas on power. And again, I don't have a problem with that, but you have to supplement that somehow. And they have the resources to have these studios. And I don't know why they don't do it. They did it before. They had the Dream Team on N64. Um, and then, you know, they had holdovers from the Dream Team on GameCube. So they're just so disjointed, Nintendo is. They just completely change, which is, you know, is meritous in some ways, but it's also disruptive in other ways. They can keep completely changing your setup every generation. Uh, from the way things are going, so this I Puckman. Um, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, from the way things are going, and if Capcom gets their act together, the PS4 might be the last Sony console I own. I have a gaming PC, a good one, so I might get an Xbox depending on how clean Fable is. Oh, yeah, Fable. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I wouldn't call myself an Uber fan of Fable, but I did like uh, Fable. Uh, one and two on uh, original Xbox. So uh, looking forward to the new one. But yeah, I have a feeling, you know, if I do buy PS5, it's going to be way at the end. And I'm just going to pick up some games. Unlike PS4, not like PS4. I didn't buy PS4 until 2017. So it's going to be a situation where there's some games I want that I can only get there. I'm going to buy it just to play those, and it's just going to go into storage, <laughs> you know? I'll buy it used or something. Uh, Jonathan Reed, yeah, we are still alive. Yeah, it was from earlier when I had an issue, or I thought I had an issue. Uh, uh, Harui, new IPs are a bit of an issue, but not everything will sell like Splatoon. Um, that is true. Uh... Stream dying. Oh, yeah, this is from earlier. Um, that was fun. See you. It lives. All right. It's been, I've been playing the Doom games. Finally played Breath of the Wild this year. Streets of Rage, Crisis, and Metro on Switch. Yeah, I'm about to get into uh, Metro again. I had it on uh, Xbox One. But I, I mean, I had like a rinky dink copy. Um, so that's one of the reasons I did buy it. I, I probably paid like 10 bucks for it. Um, so I rebought it on Switch for 30. I think I paid 30. Um, again, I, I like having my full copy, you know, if I can get cover. I didn't have cover art for my, my original Xbox version of it. Uh, it was just like cheap <laughs> you know just a disc only for the most part so um all right the only paper mario i liked was super paper mario love super paper mario i think it's so underrated jay um unless someone gives me a ps5 as a gift i don't ever see me getting one yeah um yeah again i'm i'm holding out to see but it's going to be years <laughs> before I get a PS5. Um, I do like Horizon, um, but not enough to go out and buy a PS5. Because uh, if, if you played Horizon the first game, 
Um, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, fixes, you know, uh, stuff that they did to the game and gameplay. Um, I'm looking forward to advancements. Uh, but the story, uh, at least the idea of Horizon, kind of burnt out for me after the first game. Uh, I don't know, really know where else they can go with it. Well, I, there is some open-ended stuff, but uh, I have a feeling it's not going to turn out well as far as the story goes. So, um, But yeah, I mean, that's it. I got nothing else. 29 people's up in here. Wow. Wow. My streams are picking up. I'm very happy about that. Very happy about that. Um, I think Halo being pushed back puts a lot of pressure on Nintendo to try to push Breath of the Wild 2 as a holiday release. I don't think it'll be holiday, Josh. Um, I think it makes way more sense to put Breath of the Wild 2 out in March, April of next year. Because um, that's, that's Zelda's 35th anniversary. This year's Mario's. I think they're going to focus on that. Um, so that Mario remaster might be a thing. I don't know how they're going to do it. Um, I don't know if they're going to be remasters or just a compilation cart. I have a feeling it's just going to be a compilation cart, but I could be wrong. Um, but something like, I don't know how you, you know, I don't know how Mario Sunshine works without analog triggers. Um, I mean, I could, I could see it working, but, you know, that was a big part of the control with that game. The pressure that you actually put on the trigger so um i don't know what they're gonna do you know uh to make that game work more uh let's see uh jay i still have games on switch i still didn't play yet resident evil 5 Already played it on 360. Wait, RE5. What's that? Already played it on 360. Want to play it again? Resident. Is this Resident Evil? You played Resident Evil 5 on 360? Uh, is that a comment? I'm confused. Uh, Revelations 2, Doom 3. Yeah, I, I play. I, you know, I already beat all those games. Um, not, not Resident Evil. I didn't play past Resident Evil 5. And I just don't. Have, I don't know. I I get burnt out from series, so I kind of. Um, I would. I guess I wouldn't mind playing the remasters of two and three, um, but I'm sure I'll get around to those. Breath of the Wild 2021 Spring Prime Trilogy in the summer, Prime for holiday. That would be great, Malik J. That would be great, Malik JC. Uh, J Biggs. There are a couple of uh, other things or the games I have on my Switch. I don't. I know I didn't play yet, but I can't think of. Jonathan Reed, I will buy PS5 one to two years from launch for Ratchet and Clank. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ratchet and Clank is a game that I'm interested in. Need to see more. Um, I like the series, but, you know, after you played one Ratchet and Clank, you've, I wouldn't say you've played them all, but you know what to expect. I, let's see, maybe. They will use the right stick. I was thinking about that to control the flood pressure, but you know, even that, it's gonna feel weird because you use the right stick in um, sunshine already to look around. So what are they gonna do about that? You gotta look around. So I don't know. Uh, maybe they will use. All right, then already. Did you see Nintendo's tweet from earlier today? Yes, and I totally ignored it because they made a similar tweet last summer and people got all been out of shape and crazy about sunshine coming for sure and it just like meant nothing. <laughs> it meant nothing at all. So I just kind of ignored it. And you see, I've seen people with the video headline is sunshine coming. Like, I mean, I know what you're doing. You're, 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 it's clickbait. You, know, you want to get those views. But you did that same garbage last year. So I have no... Uh, desire to watch your video. Uh, I get an Xbox Series S when Halo comes out, but I might get to play Gears of War 4 and 5. Yeah, I need to finish Gears 5. Mario Sunshine was that great. I disagree. <laughs> um, Mario Sunshine is my least favorite 3D Mario game. I've said it a billion times. 
um, for many reasons. But, it, I mean, it's still a good game. I'm not saying it's not a good game, but it's my least favorite 3D Mario game. Um, I expect the quality to be more. Um, I don't think it was polished enough. I didn't care for Delfino Island setting all that much. It got really boring after a while. It didn't have the variety of Mario games I was used to. Um, so that's my take. Mario Sunshine wasn't oh wasn't that great. I thought I deleted that message. <laughs> Says Jonathan. Um, I wait. What happened? You jumped again. Let's see. Uh, for Malik J for Sunshine R button for half flood power and ZR for max. Oh gosh, I mean that that's. You could do that, but that would be so unintuitive. Um, I mean, there's ways around it, you know. I just wish they would have just gave us analog triggers like everybody else. I don't understand. And Nintendo's analog triggers were so good. Uh, they were the first really comfortable ones, as far as I'm concerned, in the GameCube. And why why they stopped doing it? Cheap, being cheap. Uh, Malik J, for, I read that already. Josh Brown, they tweeted out a picture. Oh, I'm talking about Mario. Um, I don't know what happened, but after the PS3, one Ratchet and Clank, that's super boring to me. Yeah, same here. Um, I hope that Crash 4 and Spyro 4 are good. Toys for Bob is a solid studio. Same here, uh, I Puckman. I Puckman. Uh, Josh uh, J. Biggs, here is what Nintendo should do. Release a pro controller. Um, what is it? I missed it. Uh, something jumped. Um, release a... Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Release a pro controller. Pro, LOL, with analog triggers and a mic jack. But here's the cool thing. You can use your Super Nintendo... Or your Super Nintendo. You can use your GameCube controller for Sunshine uh, if you have the attachment. So you can actually use your GameCube controller to play that game. That would be cool. If they do actually make that game a port or a remaster or whatever, um, make sure it's compatible with your GameCube controller. Let's see. Mario Sunshine wasn't that... Oh, I read that already. Uh, Jay, I love Sunshine, man. Says Zeno. Good for you, Zeno. <laughs> you know how I feel about Sunshine. Um, Jay Biggs and pretty much brought me back into gaming. Uh, Bronze One N, what's up? And thanks for the five dollar donation. I would love a new punch out, Mad World, the conduit, or at least ports, but I couldn't pay sixty dollars for ports. Here, here, man, I would love to see conduit in HD because it is a really nice looking game on Wii. Um, I would love to see it in HD. Uh, Mad World as well. Love the art style. I'd love to see that in HD. Um, I guess you kind of can if you play that other game that was kind of the sequel to it that only came out on PS3. It was kind of garbage, though, I heard. Um, but yeah. Thanks again, Bronze One. Jay Biggs, I know you could use the game controller. I don't have wish they would release a new Wavebird. Oh, man, that would be great. Um, I, a wave bird with rumble. That would be nice. Jay Biggs, I love Conduit. Jonathan Reed, I gave my copy of Mad World to Jay Biggs. Is that for real? Uh, Josh Brown, I would like for you to start a lot of random beefs with other YouTubers who have never said or done anything against you. <laughs> uh, that would be so wrong, but hilarious. Josh Brown. Uh, GoldenEye Wii versus Conduit for best Wii FBS. Uh, I'd pick Conduit. Uh, I was not a big fan of GoldenEye Wii. Uh, I'd pick Conduit 2. Um, Jonathan Reed, I was going to say I never gave Mad World back to you. That's funny. 
Uh, yeah, I would love to see another Mad World. Uh, every time I live stream, I get these, <laughs> I get these comments on the page that are like spam, and it's funny. Live hot girls, stop, stop it. I love Mr. T beef videos from back in the day. You went in on them. Yeah, I mean, I had to. Because, you know, especially as Nintendo fans, we were getting it from left and right back in those days. And I had to come in and be the champ. Now, I can't say that I loved beefing with people. But I certainly loved responding. Um, I was pretty good at it, I think. Um... Those were good times. <laughs> Those were interesting, interesting times. Uh, I'm going to get off here soon. Let's see. I saw your Mad World. Oh, you guys are still talking about the Mad World copy? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, let them keep it. All right. I think that's it, man. Uh, yeah, we talked about Halo. I didn't, I didn't specifically say this is the Halo topic, but Halo DeLalo. <laughs> That's really clever, right? I was a Wii U from junior year of high school to sophomore year of college. I got into gaming arguments daily. Oh, boy, I bet. I bet. What's a Wii U? What's a PU? It would be really clever, the stuff that they would come up with. Any hopes of Switch Lite special editions soon? Are people really into Switch Lite? I mean, I know they sold, what, 9 million or so units. Um, but, you know, other than being cheaper, there's really, for me anyway, there's really no need for a Switch Lite. You know, it's like I'd rather just spend the extra 100 But I understand, you know... That hundred dollars could be the difference between getting two switch lights or one, or switches for your, whoever to play, like a Christmas thing or birthday or whatever. Um, so it's a good value to save, but it's like then you lose the ability to switch. So to me, it's kind of pointless. But um, and they don't really have any compelling looking ones. I think. I mean, I think I like. The gray with the teal buttons, that looks kind of cool to me. If I bought one, that would be the one. Um, but, eh. I mean, they can do like they do with the 3DS. And they did with, you know, everything going back from DS to Game Boy Advance or whatever. Um, and had some really custom cool looking ones, Zelda themed ones, and Pikachu and all that stuff. I think they already have a, a Pokemon one, right? So... I have both the Switch and the Switch Lite. Yeah. I mean, the collector in me would want to do that, but it's like, it's not really practical <laughs> to have a Switch and Switch Lite for me. Uh, how does that work for you, Jay? Let me know. Um, any hope? Oh, I read that already. Uh, I, Pac Man, Mario Sunshine is cool, but it kind of doesn't make. Since as you aren't really challenged to jump and parkour air around the areas, it's pretty cool game though. I liked it on GameCube. No more special edition switches. Make a stronger one, says Jay. Uh, I want to switch light for Jim Cardio, says Zeno. Uh, I need a cheap Wii U. My broke mine broke over a week ago. I have a lot of digital games. Um, so you all you really need is like a replacement for the console itself. I've seen some fairly cheap ones online. You know, I've seen even 45, but you got to get lucky uh, on eBay. Um, so just look for, you know, console only because I'm guessing your gamepad is fine and your hookups all work. So... 
look for console only or what's the word they use? Um, there's a word that's used a lot. Um, and I can't think of it. Uh, I have my light as my backup if I go out of town or out of, out of I'm guessing it's out of town. I have the dark gray one. I want it. A black one. Yeah. What's the next big game you want most on Switch? Like, what would make you jump out of your chair and yell? Uh, Super Mario Odyssey 2. That's, you know, that's what I expected this year. And that's the game that would make me jump out of my chair and yell. But anything, you know, GameCube Legacy, uh, the le you know, which means a lot. we last got the games on GameCube, Wave Race, um, uh, F Zero. Uh, those are the type of games. Um, if those came, I'll be very happy. What up, fool? Says Lil V seven seven two. What up? What up? I never use my light since lockdown. I haven't really left my house much, but since I go out, I will bring it with me. I use it out of the dock. Oh, I, I use my Switch dock mostly. Never take it out of the dock. Okay. Um, says Jay, uh, the one time I took my Switch on a trip with me, I said to myself, this is why I would want a Switch light. Okay. Custom Robo would be perfect for Switch. I agree. It would be. Um, I don't know why I didn't mention that one, but yes, since I just showed my copy of it. But yeah, that's it, folks. I got nothing else. Um, like I said, with the Halo, uh, it definitely sucks that it's not going to be a launch game. But my purchase of Xbox Series X had nothing to do with Halo. <laughs> you know, it would be great to have it. But um, uh, my purchase was more practical upgrading and uh you know being able to have all on one console same thing with my ps3 so uh whereas my ps3 ended up being a not so fruitful purchase at the end um i know uh as far as ps3 games go i didn't buy a ton um i was mostly on 360 uh so, I mean, again, 99% of the third party is going to be on a Series X. Uh, it's a no-brainer for someone like me who has an Xbox catalog that I can upgrade. So, it is getting really hot in here. And uh, I need to get, turn these damn lights off before I burn and melt. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat already, even with the fan on, so... Gonna go ahead and get out of here. Uh, is it true? Is it true? Crash Four coming to Switch? Well, uh, it's not confirmed. People found some code in the website that said Switch, you know, and people think based on that. But there has been situations where that was just kind of added just in case, and the game never came. So my guess is it will come. It, it makes no sense for Crash 4 to not be on Switch. It's probably going to sell the best on there, hands down. So uh, we'll see. But uh, I think it will come. But the uh, the code or whatever, the coding on the website that they found uh, doesn't mean it is coming for sure because that's happened for other games that never came to Switch. So... Um... Do you think Doug Bowser helped create the coronavirus? <laughs> Says Josh. Uh, no, but he probably feels great that he can use it as an excuse to why 2020 is so weak for Switch. So maybe he did. All right, that's it, guys. I'm out of here. Thank you all for joining. I appreciate it. Most of you guys hit the like button. I'm very happy for that. Um, I really thank you guys for, uh, joining, uh, thanks for my donators, bronze one in the $5. Uh, I'm trying to scroll back and see who else, 
I can't remember. Somebody gave me a donation early on. Oh, yes. Kieran Saunders for the $2 donation. Appreciate that, guys. Um, every little bit goes back into the channel. Um, I'm going to get better, I promise you, at this whole live streaming thing. Um, I want to do game streams. Am I missing? Okay, yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you guys again. Um, you guys helped take my mind off of things. I wasn't going to say anything, but I will say it. Uh, Monday morning, uh, my dad passed away, and it's something I've been dealing with. And um, I didn't want to just like not do anything, sit around and think about that stuff uh, because you know. 2020 is officially the worst year of all time, uh, especially now that he passed away. And then we have uh, hospital situations where we couldn't even go see him, you know? Um, and that was, uh, that's been very tough. So, um, you know, so even if you're not affected by the virus, you are, you know, even if you're not infected by it, you are because the situations where you have family members or whatever in the hospital and you can't go see them because of the protocol of this damn virus. So um, that has been awful and hard to deal with. And, you know, I wasn't going to say anything, but, you know, I think I need to hear myself speak out loud about it uh, to help me heal. So, um Thank you guys all for your condolences. I appreciate that. Um, I'm dealing with it. Um, we're, you know, like I said, my family, we're dealing with it. Uh, it's been tough, very tough. Um, but I feel like if I stay on and do my thing, it'll help me get through it better than just kind of like sitting in the dark, you know, listening to sad music and moping. So, um, so this stream's dedicated to my pops. Love you. Um, see you on the other side. Uh, and again, thank you guys. And um, I hope good money came in. <laughs> what a donation. Thanks, my man. I appreciate it. Um, uh, stay strong, says Jay Biggs. Thank you, my man. Um, ah, it's been tough. It's been tough. Uh, I have a big family. And just, you know, having to contact people who we didn't know, and uh, it's been a lot. Um, my sister, she's, she's my younger sister because I'm the oldest, but she's the oldest of my siblings other than me. She's been really doing her thing, and I, I love her to death. She's been awesome. Um, and uh, I don't know if I could, you know, handle this the way I've been handling without her. So shout out to her. Baby girl, you know, love you to death. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you very much. This stuff helps me get through it. So I appreciate you guys for watching, rocking out with me. And, uh, you know, send your prayers up to the most high. Um, you know, he's in a better place, so. Got to look at it like that. And uh, uh, thanks, Jonathan, for the donation. See, that's why I didn't want to do it, because I was thinking, like, people are going to maybe start sending donations and stuff. Uh, that's not why I'm saying it. I'm just saying it because there's people out there that know um, that I've been dealing with this. And, um, you know, to let them know this is why I continue to do what I do. Um, and here again, um, I'm going through this personal issue and yet I was able to still come on here in the gaming bubble and talk about Nintendo, uh, what they need to do, but I'm obviously I'm still dealing with something that's very serious. That's way more important. Um, but I wanted to say that cause I wanted to make that point that we can still have our hobby, um, because our hobbies help us escape, you know, um, and uh, that's why 
we can still talk about these things that are not that are not that important in the scheme of thing in the scheme of things uh we can still talk about those things and still be um critical so oh gosh see this is why <laughs> i didn't want to do it uh bronze one thank you you guys don't have to send anymore but i appreciate it um certainly do uh, we almost got everything taken care of um and uh <laughs> I appreciate it though. So thank you again, Bronze One, Jonathan Reed. Uh, good money now. Um, Kieran and oh, that was Bronze One again. Uh, thank you, thank you guys again. Uh, and I'm out. And I will have. I should have a standalone video tomorrow. Uh, uh, that's actually somewhat having to do with my dad. So. I'll have that tomorrow, and then on Friday, I will likely have out um, – no, I will definitely have out my Top 10 Obscure Games video. That's a standalone. And uh, somewhere in there, I'm going to be working on my first Nintendium video. Um, so look out for that. Uh, I don't know what your question is, Master Yoshi. I don't know if you missed it, but – <laughs> there's something maybe go back and watch the replay but uh, dealing with a little something here all right but anyway thank you guys again i appreciate you thanks for watching and listening and uh oh wait a minute are you going to be doing another dad to the max at some point i mean my son is he wants to do his own thing so uh yeah i'm sure i'm, I'm, I'm sure i will um I haven't really said too much to him about it recently, but we got to figure out what we're going to do. We'll do it. We'll do it. I think that would be a good video to also dedicate to Pops. So, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, but anyway, thank you guys again for watching and listening. And, um, oh, yeah, I'm not on I'm not on Streamlabs, so I can't do my cool outro. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'll just hit. Oh, wait a minute. I'm on the wrong thing here. All right, there we go. And stream. All right, guys. Peace out. Thank you for everything. And I'll see you. And I'll see you for who's next time. Peace out.